Zoom, zoom, zoom. Choo, 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 choo. Come in, Delta 295. Come in. Choo, choo, choo. Bogey's on my tail. Bogey's on my tail. Excuse me while I pretend to take myself seriously in this. Hey, I'm Alex Radical from Board Game Co. And this is Snapship Tactics. This is Snapship Tactics. This is a probably active Kickstarter by the time you watch this. I'll have a link down below and everything you see here is a prototype, rules, components, all that stuff subject to change. And this is a space simulation combat battle with a toy factor of absolute 10 out of 10. This is not a review. This is a first impressions. I've only had a chance to play this a few times. It only just showed up. And honestly, I think the best ways to play this game are not the ways I've played it. We'll talk about that more. So first impressions, all that stuff. But Snapships, to give you some context and some background, Snapships is a toy line, a toy line that's been around for some time. I don't know exactly how long, but previously before Snapship Tactics came out. The toy line consists of having spaceships where you can go ahead and plug and play whatever it is you want by just pulling these off. They come off very easily if you actually have the little gimmick. I don't have the gimmick. We can go ahead and now we have a damaged, damaged spacecraft, which can happen in battle too, or we can just snap that back on and we have our spaceship again. We have piles of little toys and little adjustments and blades and things you can snap onto your ships, all of which are just about the toy factor until now. This toy line was about having a set of toys. You had certain pre-constructed ships. You'd buy a, a model. The model would come with a, a ship that you could build and like three versions of the ship you can build, giving you a lot of fun that you can do. And as you start to build them, as you start to get better at the types of things that you're building, at what you're trying to construct and how you're trying to construct it, being mindful of all that, as you did that more and more, you'd have the opportunity to start building whatever you want. You'd have the opportunity to start building different things to your own imagination. Think the, the Lego of, well, spaceship combat. And these are a lot of fun. I can testify to that. I've given these to my kids. I've played with them myself. They are a ton of fun to absolutely assemble and construct. And that first build you make starts to lead into the next one. You start to learn how the ships are constructed. You build another one. You build another one. And by the time you've done the three ships that come into your build, you're ready to start playing around. You start mixing and matching sets, building your own constructs. The things you see on the table right now, these are not, at least I don't, some of them, some of these are pre-constructed builds. Others are already just the product of my imagination or my kid's imagination of having just gone through the process of learning how to construct and build your own little spacecraft simulation stuff and just having something intensely cool to move around the table, which is where Snapship Tactics comes in. Snapshot Tactics is the prototype part of this conversation. It's the part where we have a board game, or a space simulation, tactical combat, whatever you want to call it, a miniatures game, built around snapships. It takes the toy factor of what we previously had. It takes the toy factor of being able to construct a ship with the types of fins, the, the, the engines, the, the weapons you have, all the aspects that you want to see built and constructed, and it puts that on your table so you can start whizzing them around the board and trying to navigate and outmaneuver and pincer combat and hit them and move around and turn and cascade and shoot your rockets directly into the rear of the ship, blowing it up and knocking it over. That's what this game is. It's space combat with the things you've already built, which leads to what is this? How does it play? All of those things. Well, as a starting baseline, you're going to go through the process of building out your ships. You can do that with pre-assembled ships, you can do that with pre-assembled squadrons, or you can have your, your point allocation as far as how many points you can spend building out your own ship, adjusting it between battles, deciding you want a little bit more maneuverability, a little bit more speed, a little bit more rockets, a little bit more lasers, whatever it is you want to add to the ship. You have the ability to start modifying, constructing, and adjusting for it. Then from there, the combat's going to take place on this, well, space map. This is just a little space map over here. You can have whatever board you want. You'll have various terrain elements that have different impacts, things like moving your ship further, giving you some camouflage from missiles in space, uh, adding to your energy and refreshing some of your cubes you use, because the cubes in this game are going to be your system, your economy, as you try to figure out how to spend cubes to activate everything at your disposal, which is where we have this over here. These over here are going to represent the cards you have. You'll have these little trays you'll put in the cards. The cards represent the various ship parts that you have built, the actual elements of the fact that, hey, we have these wings, and these wings are going to be, you know, these wings over here, and these wings correspond to this part, and that means you have the XF-25 wings, and now we can activate those XF-25 wings to do a variety of things. We can activate over here by spending two cubes and a red cube, two blue and a red, in order to be able to, to strafe to the left or to the right and then pivot. That'll allow us some adjustment. It gives us some maneuverability. Or we can just use it to increase our shields, helping us survive when the other enemy ships come at us trying to kill us. Over here, we have weapons. We have, let's say, the M MK-16 autocannon. Again, it'll be a part that snaps onto your ship. It's an actual snap ship part. And from there, it gives you the, the range of attack, how it fits into your grid. That little grid icon over there means it's going to be in the forward-facingness of your arc, 
from this ship over here. Here's a forward facing arc. You'll shoot from there. You'll shoot at a range of two. A range of two, each of these rulers represents a range of two. We have a range of one, then a range of two, and then another ruler for a range of up to four. And it rolls four dice with a two modifier on what you need to achieve to actually hit. And each hit will do one damage. And you need to spend two blue cubes to activate that card. That's going to be the general trend of how you actually activate things because your ship will come with a variety of cubes you need. It'll come with a certain number of red cubes and blue cubes, red cubes and blue cubes that you can utilize to go ahead and activate all the things you need. You're going to take your cubes, you're going to spend them every single round on activating various parts. And the difference between a red cube and a blue cube is red cubes prevent your parts from activating again until you remove them. Additionally, if your part gets destroyed while there's red cubes on it, then your ship will take more damage. You're pushing yourself too fast, you're using things a little bit more dangerous, and if someone decides to take out that part of your ship while it's being activated, well, you're going to have a problem. Now, every single round, there's a degree of refreshing, which allows you to give some economy to the game. You might have access to 10 cubes, 11 cubes, 12 cubes, but maybe you can only pull back five a turn, which means you'll have time to decide which turns you want to push yourself way too hard, pushing yourself to the max that you can do in order to actually take out your opponent, in order to activate your shield, your thruster, your all these things, activate your missiles and your for your MK-16 autocannon, activate both of them to just take down your opponent because you are behind them, you have a plus modifier in your rolls, you're going to be attacking them, and you need to figure out what you can actually do to take them out. But that also means that next turn, you're going to have a very weak turn, and your opponent might have a very strong turn. And so these are the games you're going to play, the economy of the engine, as your ship slowly drifts through space, and drifts through space is part of it. Most ships, or all ships in the game, will always have some degree of inherent movement. So you might think, hey, that's great, I'm positioned perfectly where I need to be to take down my opponent. Well, you're always moving. Whether or not you activate things, you're always moving a little bit. There's a little bit of drift through space of so figuring out what you need to do, and you need to be mindful of that and plan for that and take that into account, even as you're trying to balance your shields, even as you try to balance your other weapons, even as you try to figure out which parts to take down from your opponent. If you're disabling a heart on your opponent's ship, what is better for you? Do you want to take down that missile he's been using to shoot you, or maybe just take down his maneuverability, because if he can't aim and fire, well, then you're fine. Past that, you're going to be rolling dice. You're going to roll dice, like we said already, depending on the dice, depending on the situation. You're going to modify it based on the ship you're fighting against. You're going to modify it based on the, uh, if you attack from the rear. You're going to modify it based on the actual weapon itself, and you'll have a hit result. There'll be the instant critical. Criticals will allow you to take down your opponent's parts, disabling those parts, flipping them over, and then they'll have to activate them to pull them back, which both cost them cubes, and means they can't use them that turn. And so there's a constant balance of what you do, of what you take down. There's going to be times where you get to modify or adjust your shield upwards, but it's going to be the modification factor to the dice that people playing. If you have six shield over here, it's going to be significantly harder for your opponent to take you down this turn, but every turn your shield resets to whatever your ship's default is, whether higher or lower, so that boost to your defense is only temporary. Meanwhile, you're being mindful of your health the entire time, trying not to die, trying not to die is generally a good thing, and that's basically what's going on in Snapstick Tactics. It's all about trying to build a ship trying to be mindful of the parts you have, trying to be mindful of building out a fleet, which is where we start to drift into my opinion of the game so far, based on my plays of it. Again, first impressions aspect. And I say first impressions because I believe the best way, for me at least, the best way to play this game, is going to be playing a multiple ship on ship combat, which I have not done yet. I've only played this as a one versus one. I've only played this having one ship on both sides. I've only played that, 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 that tactical maneuverability through space, and I do enjoy it. It is fun to build your ship. It's fun to come up with whatever your engine is. You can start with the presets. That's fun. But then take it to the next level and starting to get to a point where you can actually build out your own thing and construct what you want and have a degree of agency over this is what I'm doing. This is how I plan on approaching the space combat. Sure, you have your missiles, but your missiles won't help you if you can't hit me. And my goal is to make sure I'm fast and maneuverable and have a lot of defense and just enough, just enough hit to actually hit back and hurt you while I dance, dodge, and survive every single attack. There's a degree of agency over what you built and a degree of satisfaction of watching that agency unfold or amusement watching it unfold poorly. Either one has, uh, has an option. Past that, you're going to be moving through space. You're going to be trying to take advantage of, of, the, of the board, of the situation, of the terrain. You're going to be making choices as far as how and when to maneuver, how far to go, how much to close the gap, how much to lengthen it. Trying to go for something with a high maneuverability but long-range weapons, that can keep you out of your opponent's reach and you can play that dance. There are a lot of ways to approach both the just extremely high toy factor, extremely high toy factor this game gives you, but also the fact that you're building out your own ship, you're building out your own uh, gear, and you're, you're trying to come at this game with your own approach to how you want to play it. Where I haven't played Snapshot Tactics and where I want to is playing it in a 2 versus 2 or a 3 versus 3 combat. You'll need a larger map. I mean, 2 versus 2 you can probably get down on this, but whatever. But you can figure out the space you need, figure out the space map you're using, or just the table. You don't need the space map. It's nice to have this. It's nice to be able to like have a nice little galaxy to look at, but certainly not essential. You figure out that. You figure out the players. You make sure you have enough Snapshot content to do that, and then you start going through space. 
because it's a lot more interesting to me. And this is true of skirmish games in general. Any skirmish game I've ever played, I find more interesting the more key characters you have on the board. A one versus one is fine, but there's a little bit less degree of elegance as far as what do you do when you actually close that gap. Are you still dancing around another? Is there a degree of attacking, of ganging up, of approaching people from the rear as they're engaged in the front? There's a lot more agency, I find, in skirmish games when you have more main characters on the board and these ships are your main characters. And so that's an element where I still want to see this game play out. Because speaking frankly, for me, where Snapship Tactics is right now, and this is where we start bordering into the whole first impressions and all that stuff, where Snapship Tactics is right now, is the toy factor is insanely off the charts. This is one of the better toys I have played with or engaged with. I've been building ships, my kids have been building ships. It's incredibly satisfying, they look amazing, they are easy to build, and they're very satisfying and easy to come up with your own imagination. To apply your imagination to this is not that hard. Once you go through a few builds, the toy factor is off the charts. I love it. The game itself, the skirmish game where it, is, where it is right now, I enjoy it, but on a one versus one, I don't know if I'd feel compelled to pull it out. I'd play it. You want to play Snapship Tactics with me? It's fun. It's fun to blow up your ship. And you don't have to, but it's also fun to go ahead and rip off a few parts here and there, dropping them onto the uh, space board. And, and it doesn't actually have an impact. You can just flip over the card on your board, but it is fun to watch the uh, space get littered with the parts of your dead opponents or dead allies as the case may be. And so I enjoy the process of the game while also not being quite in love with it yet as far as a single player head-to-head -head mode. This is a common thing for me with skirmish games. It's not unique to Snapshot Tactics. It's the idea that I find one versus one head-to-head -head games, skirmish games, are a little less satisfying because it mostly comes down to closing the gap and then smacking each other in the face. Now, Snapshot Tactics, one of the things it does well is that forced movement every single turn keeps you constantly on your toes. You can't just close the gap and then shoot each other. And the fact that you can build your ship different ways will lend you, self, will lend you options or strategic approaches that will give you more incentive to try different things or to approach the game differently which is a lot of fun i would say as a one versus one as a one versus one skirmish game snapshot tactics is already better than many i've played but it's still a one versus one skirmish game i want to see this play out as two versus two i want to see this play out as three versus three i want to see it play out with bigger and badder ships with more points to assign to them to a degree of just intense space combat manipulation and warfare Overall, I like this. Overall, I'm a, overall, I'm a fan of the system. I need to see more of it to see where I lie with it. And honestly, like this is another thing for me as well, which you may or may not know because I don't know if I've heavily engaged with it. But this has like a kind of ruler-based movement system where you're going to be like measuring range. You're going to be using your rulers. That's not something I typically like. I played Warhammer back in the day and I've been not allergic, but I've been averse to movement-based systems and, and rolling dice and checking stats and things that make it feel like a strong miniature skirmish game to the degree that Warhammer is. Snapshot Tactics has that, and I'll admit I don't love it. I don't like measuring range. I don't like the kind of movement that is like using a little grid system to move along the board. I don't like those things. But it's also not over the top, and it's simple enough and accessible enough that it doesn't overly bother me. It's a reminder to me of the systems that I don't love, while not being present here enough that I mind it that much. And so that's why I am with this one. Intrigued, want to see more, enjoying the toy factor tremendously, but very curious as far as how this develops for me once I dive into it as a two versus two, as a three versus three, or anything else. And that's Snapshot Tactics. There'll be a link down below to the Kickstarter. You can check that out. I didn't prep this to have recommendations for other games, but I assume Star Wars X-Wing will be a very, very, very valid option as far as other game systems to check out. I didn't really think past that as far as other games. Super Fantasy Brawl. If you want a skirmish game with three versus three, Super Fantasy Brawl. One of the reasons I enjoy Super Fantasy Brawl is because of the fact that it has a three versus three skirmish game, which changes the entire way you approach the game. A one versus one in Super Fantasy Brawl would not be for me. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, have a good one.